Logan Browning. Uh, you star in the Netflix series Dear White People as Sam White, who is a college activist who hosts a radio show about racism. Uh, and it's based on Justin Simeon's film of the same name from uh, 2014. Uh, had you seen that film before the opportunity for the series came around? Yeah, I saw the movie with a um, cast member of mine from a show called Hit the Floor. Uh, Kimberly Elise is from Minnesota, and that's where they shot the film. So she invited me to a screening, saw it, and got to see a panel. Um, so yeah, it was really cool when I first saw the film because I automatically related to it going to a PWI, and um, you know that that was a very different time for us, you know, um, in terms of our social climate. Uh, but I still related to the movie a lot when I saw it. And so, so what did you think about, you know, the opportunity when it was being made into a series uh, that you would be getting to play Sam White? I was so excited. Um, yeah, because like I said, I saw myself in Sam already. Um, and when it first came into my inbox, I was so confused because I've seen this. Did my agents just send me an old audition or something? Um, and once I realized it was for Netflix, I was really excited and I was excited that they were doing a television version. And then I went on to look at the, the sides, they call them sides when it's just a couple of scenes for an audition. And um, I was just so blown away by the writing um, especially the monologue that was written for Sam that was the audition piece. It was just so powerful. And I've never wanted to do an audition as much justice as that one. I, I felt like I wasn't just auditioning for a part in a show. I was, I was, I was sharing this information via, um, this character. It was, it was a really cool experience for me. And what was that? What was that speech that uh, you know that you know? Because I mean, Sam White is of course full of them uh, in, in in such a wonderful way. Uh, what, what what speech did what were you auditioning with? The audition speech was the final monologue in episode one in the pilot. It's when she busts into the radio station and she's just fed up. And um, what I really like about that monologue is the entirety of the pilot episode you see sam as this um speaker box for the movement and you do get to see her softer side when she's with gabe but what was so great about that monologue is i think as an audience member empathize with people in a marginalized group if you weren't already you see how much it hurts someone, all of these things, you know, a community, how much it hurts a community. Um, something is, as something like a blackface party that some students may not see any harm in. Uh, when you watch that or read, or even for me say that final monologue, there's just a level of connection to the humanness um, aspect of, of an issue like that, and 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 Sam White is so so outspoken and, and unapologetic. Uh, you know, is, is it liberating to play that side of her? You know, that that's that's full of righteous passion and 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 isn't afraid to to you know speak truth to power, basically. Yeah, for sure. I get to say some awesome shit, um, <laughs> and it feels good. Um, I will say it can be frustrating because Sam is young and um, I have experienced the radical passion that she has and I've experienced some of the negative ramifications of it. Um, granted, I'm still young, I'm still figuring this life thing out, but even a younger version of me would be so quick to want to fight anytime something relating an injustice happened with anyone i would always be the person to uh 
like I would call myself a pit bull puppy. I'm just always like yapping and I'm gonna, gonna let you know how I feel. So on the flip side of it being liberating, it could be frustrating for me sometimes because I would have these speeches as Sam and I would think, oh girl, like, you know, you're not really listening to the other side. You're just, you're just um, voicing your own opinion without hearing the other options as well. Um, but at the same time, I do love that I get to be a voice of the young activist generation. I don't think there are um, enough versions of that in the media and entertainment. So it's really um, an honor to portray the millennial activism. In terms of, uh, you know, as you mentioned, listening to the other side, one of the noteworthy things about the film and, and the series uh, is that it is you know, different sides and, and not just between, you know, the, the black activist characters and, and you, know, the, the, you know, the white, you know, reverse racism crowd, uh, but also within that, you know, black community, there, there are divisions there, there are different experiences, you know, it's a different experience for women and if you're gay and, you know, even if you're light skinned or dark skinned, you know, your experience and perspective is different. Uh, what do you think about getting to portray that wide variety of perspectives in the, in the series? I think it's so important because in our history of entertainment, the other ethnicity is always just seen as the best friend or the sidekick. So uh, what this show has the opportunity to do is to say, hey, not only are um, diverse ethnicities bigger than just a best friend or a sidekick, but even within that um, that community, there are multiple stories to be told, multiple personalities and opinions to be shared. And um, it, it's really just a great stepping stone for, for entertainment and also for people understanding just their day-to-day -day interactions with people who don't look like them. You know, you assume, some people can assume that if someone um, doesn't look like them but fits into a category of a type of person they know physically, then they, they know who that person is, but that's not the case. And I just think this show mind in a way that America specifically needs, uh, we, we are such a like color class and such a color and ethnic based society you see someone who looks like a looks in a particular way and you stereotype them in this country it's other countries too um, it is actually but the show is just important because it, it just it kind of it screws with that in a good way and, and in this day and age, especially, uh, you know, in just the three years between the film and the series, you know, there's been such a, a big, uh, uh, you know, social, cultural, political shift uh, just in this in this country, you know, in the uh, age of Black Lives Matter, in the age of Donald Trump, and, uh, you know, all of these things converging around race uh, these days to kind of you know, slap us all in the face and say, no, this, you know, Obama didn't solve racism in America forever. Uh, you know, what do you think the significance of the show is now compared to maybe uh, three years ago? Wow. Um, well, for one, just to your point, uh, art and time are, they are so closely, um, embedded uh and the great part about the film being in a obama presidency is that will always exist and we'll always have that to go back to and to show people in the future um a part of that time and how specific it is and even the show believe it or not the the season one of your white people a obama presidency as well because trump didn't actually um until the last day of our filming um and in a season two and beyond with this new um political shift it is it is going to be relevant and i think the show is going to talk about it and um 
yeah, it's just, it, it changes people. It changes people's, the, the shift in political um, agenda changes people's and what's important, you know, what the current topics are um, during the Obama presidency and towards the end, there was a lot of rise in police brutality cases and um, just hearing more about young African-American men um, being murdered um, by cops. And so that's reflected in the show a lot. And um, while those things are still going to be the case, during a Trump presidency, the attention is shifting to different things. You know, we've got the Russia probing and we've got our health care. Those are the things that are um, affecting people right now. And so that's what is potentially going to be talked about in season two. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, the show does deal with uh, uh, you know kind of po police brutality, police confrontation uh, in 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 one episode uh, where there's a confrontation with uh, campus police uh, that comes very close to ending very badly. Um, you know, th th in in a show that's largely a, a you know a comedy in, in in many regards, that was an especially tense scene. Uh, what was it like uh, shooting that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That day was rough. The day was rough because um, a, all of us in that um, party scene, whether we had experienced um, an instance like that in person or just through the media, we were all affected in some way, some more um, intense than others. And it it was it was a long scene to film because we had to take breaks. We had to take about fifteen minute breaks between scenes because, regardless of if your character was in a space of tears, we all were at the end of that scene every time because not only do you know that stuff to be true, but then you are put in this space where you're pretending. So you're watching it happen, but you know how real this is and and how uh, we could be put in this situation at any moment. There was a time, there was a moment that day during that scene when a young man, a young man laughed and made kind of a comment about everyone taking it so seriously. <laughs> and I lost it. I went off because it was that serious for all of us. And because of his personal privilege, it wasn't for him. And uh, I was asked by the producers if I wanted him removed. And my response was no, because I want him to see this. If this is something that he is to not have to witness and be a part of in his life, then I want this to be the moment where he understands that it is real and it does matter. And um, yeah, so it was an intense day. <laughs> and, uh, and that episode uh, happened to be directed by uh, Barry Jenkins. Uh, now, of course, Oscar winner Barry Jenkins, uh, the writer and director of Moonlight. Uh, what was it like working with him on that? Barry is amazing. He knows how to work with actors which is very important. I, I guess people assume that directors know how to work with actors, but they don't always. Like some of them are really good technically. And when it comes to the human aspect of connecting to a crew and the actors, they are just uh, completely unaware. But Barry knows how to get those important shots and to really conduct himself as a captain. Um, and he likes ice cream. We had ice cream that day and he could not take a break to go outside. So I remember him seeing, I was walking around with my ice cream and he's like, can I? I'm like, I got you, Barry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he really worked closely with um, Justin and Marquis to um, bring a very authentic essence as naturally black men can relate and bring an authentic essence to that story. Um, and Chuck, who was one of the writers of that episode. Uh, yeah, he, he was cool to work with.
Now, uh, before the series uh, even premiered, uh, you know, when the trailer came out, there was uh, some controversy from the usual dark corners of the internet about, you know, the show promoting white genocide, of course. Uh, <laughs> did you find yourself uh, on the receiving end of, of any of that blowback, or did you were you reading a lot of that or seeing a lot of that? Um, I occasionally would go look to just know what they were, like, I would look because it was our trailer, right? I want to see what people are commenting on our trailer. And they weren't even commenting on the show. These crazies were like deep ledge based on 30 seconds and a title, which is insane. I mean, if I went off of a ledge over that like capacity in my life, oh my gosh, I'd probably be dead or in jail. But um, yeah, it, it was humorous for all of us. Like we really didn't read into it much. Um, and when we did, we just giggled. But uh, I, do, I do hope that the people who were put off by the title for whatever reason, um, I do hope that they give the show a chance because uh, what they would find is their voices are actually represented in the show. The show is not trying to tell them they're wrong. The show is um, sharing all points of view. And it's just, it's funny that they're actually a part of the series and yet they are still trying to um, like bash it. It's ridiculous. Uh, the series uh, uh, has a, an interesting structure in the way it's uh, the way it, it you know storytelling is is told. Uh, it focuses on a different character's point of view in each episode. Uh, so sometimes Sam is the central focus, uh, and other times she's uh, you know a supporting player in someone else's main story. Uh, you know, what did you think about that approach to the show, getting to go you know in really in depth uh, you know for for each of these half hour segments? I think it is refreshing because. Um, when you watch a show, you follow one protagonist and you love them, but you always wonder what everyone else is doing behind closed doors when they go home and how they really feel about a certain um, topic. And having a multi-protagonist uh, way of storytelling just allows you to understand a character who originally you may think is a villain or originally you may not feel any connection to. And that just, again, relates to your own life. Someone who you may judge at first glance, it allows you to say, you know, there may be something deeper. And Justin really wanted to explore a lot of the characters he did in the film, or the characters who you get to see more of in the show, he wanted to show them in the film, but just didn't have time. And that's the fun part about a series is he gets to to explore their individual narratives. Um, and then I like how all of the stories kind of cross and merge, you know, they're not individual little movies, even though they kind of feel like they are, they all somehow relate to each other. And the relationships and the commingling, it's, I think it's really brilliant. Uh, you yeah. know, after, you know, 10 episodes, you know, you've got a chance to tell a lot of uh, Sam's story, uh, but you know, what, or is there any aspect of, of Sam you would be especially eager to explore in, in a second season? Oh, I don't even think we've scratched the surface of Sam. I think, if anything, we've only seen the surface of Sam. And um, I would love to see her backstory. You you learn a little bit more about um, Roy and Lionel growing up, but idea what Sam's life was like growing up and what it's like to be a biracial person, um, whatever those two um, racial or ethnic intersections may be, and what it feels like to be stuck between worlds. I mean, no one really addresses those people because those people feel like, oh, I'm just kind of supposed to um, meander through life, you know, looking like the one part of my existence, but um, I was, I just ran into someone, he was Mexican American, 
And I had no idea. He looked, he just looked white to me. And I was talking about Sam and he said, I completely relate because I'm Mexican. And I was like, oh, I didn't know. And um, he was saying how he relates more to his Mexican side because he was raised and so that was a part of his family he spent more time with. He said when he's with the white side of his family, he actually doesn't relate as much. And that's so interesting to me because people see him as that. So I just think the, the, the making up of a person of mixed heritage is a very interesting and important story to tell and why Sam feels it's so important for her to be a part of the revolution, I think is also something you'd learn in her backstory. Well, I want to uh, congratulate you again on on Dear White People. Uh, certainly looking forward to more of that. Uh, and thank you so much for, for talking to me today. Thank you, Daniel. I really appreciate it.